In this grade 12 accounting video, we are looking at the 2025 June examination scope specifically for a paper two and we are going to go through it referencing past 2024 question papers. The reason for this is it has come to my attention that some of you who are upgrading may not know what falls under some of these topics so this is just to make it easier for you to know what you can expect under every single one of each of this topic that i'm going to mention instead of just mentioning the topics because some of the people will think that they have covered a topic when they haven't not knowing what actually falls under that topic so i have tried to make that easy by take going through some of the 2024 question papers to show you what it is you can expect under each topic and also the video is divided into two the first part is the scope for the people who are currently in metric and the last is for the rewrites The first topic on your scope for both rewrites and people who are currently in metric for the first time in 2025 is cost accounting so if you are doing metric any form of metric that you are doing you can expect a question on cost accounting and with cost accounting what you can expect is a question that will ask you about manufacturing so cost accounting is also known as manufacturing so as you see with this question paper they tell you about perfect eats manufacturers who make stainless steel cutlery the business manufactures a 24 piece cutlery set which consists of six knives six forks six dessert spoons and six teaspoons the business produced and sold 46,300 cutlery sets during the financial year the financial year ends on 21 march 2024 and they tell you to calculate the following for the year they want you to calculate the raw materials in kg and then also the total cost of raw materials issued to uh, the factory and then they also want you to complete a production cost statement so this is basically an overview what of what you can expect when you are looking at a manufacturing or a cost accounting question you will be expected to be able to calculate the raw material cost you are also going to be expected to calculate the uh, direct labor cost so there is where, where somewhere or a different question where they will also be telling you how they are paying in their labor or most likely even in this question by the way the question paper is linked in the description box below if you are interested in this specific question so in that information you may find information on how to calculate labor how to calculate raw materials as well as factory overheads because they are going to be important to be able to complete your production cost statement again what's also important is that you know the framework for your uh, production cost statement as you can see they have left some blank spaces for you to be able to fill in so it helps when you know that after you calculate that direct material it's gonna go in as in the first row as the first line item and then the direct labor that you're going to calculate is gonna come under it when you take direct material and plus it to direct labor cost that's what gives you the prime cost so even if they didn't give you the information on labor the fact that you are able to calculate the direct material and you have the prime cost you should know how to then use those two amounts to get the direct labor so these are the things that you should look into as well as how the flow of the whole production cost statement flows so make sure you study those there's a video on this topic in this channel Secondly, both type of matriculants, whether you're doing your matric first time in 2025 or you are rewriting in 2025, you can both expect to have an inventory question. So with inventories, this is also again an example that comes from our question paper that is linked in the description box below. It's about uh, Lily Stationers. They say Lily is the owner of a business which sells stationery and office equipment. The financial year ended 29 February 2024. The business makes use of the periodic system. So you will see that we are now already talking about different types of systems. So in inventory, we have inventory systems. So make sure that as you study, you get clear on your inventory systems, especially the periodic 
inventory system this is the one that's very common in your question paper. the other one is the perpetual inventory system and that one is the one that you came from grade 10 and 11 already working with so it's the one where you create t accounts so that one is not very popular in metric it's not irrelevant it's just not very popular so the one that's popular that they are going to test you on is the periodic inventory system the reason being that this one it, it requires you to calculate losing stock at the end of the year which then leaves room for you to be able to uh, have to factor in things like the valuation methods which are the first in first out method the specific identification method as well as the weighted average method all of these methods so there are videos that i have made on this channel that covers them so go make sure that you watch those so as you can see even in 2.2.1 it needs you to calculate closing stock using the fifo method so get comfortable with it <music> The third topic on your scope that still covers both the first time matriculant and the rewrite is the fixed asset or the fixed asset register. Now with fixed assets, if you did your due diligence for paper one and studied and prepared your calculations for depreciation methods, if you are comfortable with depreciation in paper one, then this topic should not be that much of a problem for you because what it does most is it focuses on you being able to calculate the depreciation, the accumulated depreciation, as well as the carrying amount. So if for paper one you studied note three, which is the fixed asset note, it's pretty much the same information. You're just going to do pretty much the exact same calculations now. If you went into your paper one not knowing your depreciation or how to calculate your depreciation, this is your chance for redemption. You need to be able to get comfortable with how to calculate depreciation. This is your depreciation methods, the cost method as well as the carrying value method. So make sure that you understand how to do those and how you can uh, or where does accumulated depreciation come from so make sure that again you get comfortable with those if you know accumulated depreciation is the depreciation of all the previous years added together and carrying value carrying value is simply the cost minus the accumulated depreciation will give you the carrying value or the book value i hope you are writing all of these down because they are the things that you need to know so as you write under fixed asset write under it that you will need to know how to calculate depreciation accumulated depreciation and the carrying value or the book value If you are a first time matriculant in 2025, your scope for your June common exam will not include the reconciliation. It will end with topic three, which was the fixed asset, most likely because you have not covered reconciliation and budgeting. So if you haven't covered it in class, I would not worry about reconciliation as well as um budgeting so from this point onwards in the video i wouldn't worry about these topics but if you are rewriting or upgrading then expect that there will be a reconciliation in your question paper because remember if you are re if you are upgrading or rewriting your scope is based on what your final examination at the end of 2024 would have looked like so when you do practice make sure that you actually look at the 2024 november question papers instead of the june question papers because those ones are going to help you as they are based on what the final was and that's what you are upgrading or rewriting from so reconciliation you know that you have three types of reconciliation that is the bank reconciliation the debtors reconciliation as well as the creditors reconciliation so make sure that you are comfortable with all three when it comes to the bank reconciliation make sure that you know how to correct your cash journals and you also know the framework for your bank reconciliation and also you know how to correct the bank account balance because that's going to be needed so do make sure that you write all of those things that i just mentioned down and then when it comes to the 
debtors and creditors reconciliation first you need to understand and know your source document what each source document is for and how the operation of debtors and creditors works Lastly, for everyone who's upgrading and rewriting, your scope will include also the topic of budgeting. In budgeting, what you can expect, the first thing is a cash budget. So like you see in 4.1, they're saying indicate the appropriate blocks for the cash budget and the projected income statement. So basically, you have to know which amounts go to the cash budgets and which amounts go to the projected income statement so there are some amounts when we are looking at the income statement that are not necessarily cash for example depreciation it's not necessarily cash even though it's put in the expense section of the income statement so in the cash budget it wouldn't be there but in the projected income statement it would be there so knowing which amount falls where will become very important the other thing with the cash budget is also being able to uh, answer commentary say questions about it or theory questions about it you need to be able to talk about how the amount how much was budgeted and how much the actual ex was and what decisions were made based on what you were seeing based on the projected income statement and the cash budget then also you look at 4.2, which is going to require you to be able to complete what we call a data collection schedule. So make sure that you do get comfortable with a data collection schedule. Now, a data collection schedule, I won't lie to you, it's very tricky if you are not in practice of it. So if you are not familiar with it, do it multiple times try to practice it over and over again the more you do it the more you will get familiar with it at first it will feel like it's complicated but as you keep going it will get easier now if you need one-on-one -on -one help with anything that we have covered in this video or this subject in general we have a visual program that can help you with just that from anywhere in the country all you need is an email and a whatsapp and we are able to give you personalized help for a monthly fee this will cover full lesson recordings as well as notes and study materials for any of your subjects that you need personal help with this will include some of the subjects that are not even covered on this channel for example ch subjects like history you will soon see our full subject list we will also cover scopes for those specific subjects as well as attempt past papers together but what's most important about this virtual sessions is that you get full-time communication meaning from the hours of 8 o'clock to 4 p.m you are able to send in your questions even if you send them at late between the hours of 8 and 4 you will get replies to your questions you will get to go back and forth and get full-time attention on any question that you do have even if we have to repeat something over and over again you get to have that personalized help that is helpful to you as you can see with some of the examples there we get to exchange scripts we get to exchange question papers and you get to show me what it is that you wrote and you even get markings for your questions to see how you actually do perform when it comes to a specific question or a specific subject grade 10 to grade 12 as well as those who are upgrading and rewriting those are the full list of subjects that we do offer if you are interested in any of this for you to be able to get your price quotation it is very simple all you have to do is email me on that email address that you see there when you do email make sure that in the subject line you write your name and say name and then in the body of your email that's where you will tell me your grade and the subjects that you need help with it can be one subject Subject, or it can be a mixture of subject hands we are saying that you need to email for you to be able to get your price quotation now because this is one-on-one -on -one, it means that it puts a limit on the number of people I can take per month so I'm going to be limiting it to 10 students per month so make sure that you email to secure your spot have youtube recommend you more of my videos be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below